In this video, we'll be learning how to break the tie in the leaving variable and what are the consequences of the having tie in a leaving variable. So if we have a tie in the leaving variable, it leads to degeneracy in the simplex table. So to explain this all process, let us consider an example. Solve the linear programming problem using simplex method and this problem is a maximization problem where we have three constraint or less than. So the standard form of this LPP is that we involve the slack variable with the cost 0, 0 and these s1 s2 s3 are involved in the three constraint respectively and all the decision variable are non-negative x1 x2 are already given to be non-negative and these slack variable by definition we add the, them as a non-negative decision variables so now the first simplex table of this is and here uh, we can look at this edge minus cj value this is minus 2 and minus 1 since the problem is maximization we need to enter a variable with most negative z minus cj so x1 is the entering variable and corresponding to this I need to calculate the minimum ratio. So when I look at the minimum ratio, so this is xbi upon the scalars that is of the entering variable. So this 444 4, 4 is a scalar. So 12 by 4, this is giving me the minimum ratio as 3. 8 by 4, this gives me 2 and this 8 by 4 is also giving me 2. So we select the leaving variable corresponding to minimum ratio. Now you can see that there is a tie in the minimum ratio. So here is we having a tie. Now the question is how to break this tie. And also in the next table we will see that we will always get a degenerate solution. Degenerate means whenever we have initial set of variables. In the initial set of variables we have x1, x2, s1, s2, s3 as a basic variable. The initial selection we have s1, s2, s3 as basic variable and x1, x2 variable as non-basic variable. The non-basic variable always take the value 0. This point I have explained in my initial video. So that means x1, x2 is a 0 and the value for x, s1, s2, s3 we can read it from the table which is the right hand side that is 12, 8, 8. So this is the situation currently. Now in the next table when I uh, take the iteration so once we enter and leave a variable suppose I get x hat as a new solution and in this again I have certain as the basic variable and certain variable as a non-basic variable. So now non-basic variables are definitely going to be 0 as the definition says but if at least one of these uh, three basic variables so there would be three basic variable because we know that the size here of, of the basic variable is three also we had three constraint so there has to be three basic variable so at least one of the basic variable will be zero one of basic variable is a zero but because there is a tie in the two of these so one will leave a non-zero quantity and one of these two so if s2 leaves the basis then s3 will give us a zero value here and if we remove s3 from the basis then the value for s2 in the next table will be zero so this is why we say that if a basic variable comes out to be zero it is a degenerate basic feasible solution and the tie will lead us to degenerate basic feasible solution now i'll see this in the calculation so we have two options to break this tie which is leading to a degenerate basic feasible solution the option one is that we make arbitrary selection for the leaving variable so either we may choose s2 as a leaving variable or s3 as a leaving variable it is our choice and it is not going to disturb our optimal solution if we are going to get the optimal solution we are going to get it from both the cases so one is that we don't uh, want to break it and we can leave arbitrary now the second one is we want to understand how to break it actually so to break this tie elements of first column tied variable of unit matrix divided by corresponding elements of entering column with key element so here we must need to identify which was our initial unit matrix or initial basis so we know that s1 s2 s3 were the initial and in these two we have the tie so we need to only identify this so our initial selection was actually this initial b matrix was this s1 s2 s3 was in the basis in this only the last two column have the tie so that means i only need to focus on to these entries and then move from left to right so now in the numerator we need to put the entries this one so elements of first column so here this will become the first column this will correspond to second column and this correspond to third column. So there is a variation in these entries. Okay. So as you see that in the first column, we don't see much variation because both the entries are 0, 0. 
but as we move from left to right towards in the unit matrix we can definitely find certain variations so now in the numerator we'll have this element and in the denominator we will have the element which is due to the tie column that is 4 4 so now let's see in the first case if i look at for the first column since here i am writing the first column so the first column entry is this one so let's show it by the green color this is first column and this would be my denominator so in this case i will have 0 by 4 and 0 by 4 again there is no conclusion both are same so we'll move to the next column in this situation what is the next column next column is this next column of unit matrix which is going to be in the numerator so in this case we will have now 1 by 4 and then we have 0 by 4 now this one this 1 by 4 and then this 0 by 4 so this gives us a choice now here we have 1 by 4 which is a non-zero quantity and the second is 0 so and in case we don't get a choice here also then we can move on so we can move on means we have to look at the third column choices again so in case you can break your tie here itself then stop this process so now we see that this is 0, this is 1.4 and 0 is corresponding to minimum. So this 0 corresponding to S3 vector. So we are going to choose S3 as the leaving variable instead of S2. And now as S3 leaves the basis, so 4 becomes the pivot element and X1 is the ending variable. So in the next simplex table, we got S1, S2 and X1 as the basic variable. Since x1 is a basic variable, so we desire 1 here and all the other entries are 0. To get this position as 1 here, I need to divide this R4. So this is R4 row. I have labeled now these row so that I can apply the row operations. So R4 is R4 by 4 and similarly we can have the operations for R1, R2 and R3. So applying these operations, we get these entries as this and noticing that this 0 is appearing. So S2 is appearing now at 0 level and that is why we said that this is going to lead us to degenerate basic feasible solution. So if we had removed S2 from the basis, in this table S3 would have been remained and S3 will be leaving the value a 0 here just like we were we are getting 0 corresponding to S2. So this always lead to degenerate basic feasible solution. And now we have to again look at this table whether this table is optimal or not. But we see that Zj minus Cj is not greater than or equal to 0 which is the optimality criteria for the maximization problem. Since this is a maximization problem so we still have an entering variable x to enter into the basis and then I need to find which is the leaving variable. So obviously now in this case 4 by 4 that is 1 0 by 2 is a 0. So now the variable corresponding to 0 which is corresponding to this 0 entry is going to leave the basis. So apply the usual row operation as I have done in the previous case. We get the next table will have basic variable s1 x2 and x1 so this means we are going to get these entries and now i'm just quickly writing the entries knowing what could be the pivot element so here 2 has to be the pivot element so divide this row by 2 and make all the other entries specifically in this particular column as a 0 except this 2 so at this position 2 i need a 1 and i get remaining entries as this so this is 3 by 4 minus 1 by 4 minus 2 half 1 by 8, 1 minus half, 1 by 8 and the x, b column, we got 4, 4, 0, 2 and this degeneracy will not leave us because all these row operations that we are going to apply on 4, 0, 2 is actually based on this element only 0 because of this is the pivot row and now since this is row 0 so there is no much change in the other entries so these entries will remain as it is and the current table is still not optimal as we see that we still have a minus 1 by 4 so the entering variable is minus 1 by 4 and we'll take again the ratio 4 by 1 and 2 upon 1 by 8 that is 16 so S1 leaves the basis and 1 becomes a pivot element. Now because this 1 has a solution correspondingly here, this is 4, this is not 0. So now we see that these entries are going to change in the usual manner. So let's apply the row operation here and get the next entry. So once you get the next entry, what is in the table? 
we have removed s1 and this we are replacing with s3 so s3 comes into the basis x2 and x1 is appearing in the basis and we are getting 0 0 1 by 4 1 by 4 and 0 and the value for z is 5 so now you notice that because your xp was not 0 uh, the selection of the minimum ratio was not because of 0 so these entries are now 4 to 3 by 2 and the degeneracies have again removed so this was a case of temporary regeneracy there are other type of degeneracy such as permanent degeneracy and cyclic degeneracy that I am going to discuss in my next video. So if there is a tie in the entering variable and that tie in the entering variable we break, we can remove this temporary degeneracy or we can get a degenerate basic feasible solution. And so in this problem we see z maximum this is equal to 5 which is given here and the solution other x1 is 3 by 2 x2 is 2 and the value for x1 s2 they are 0 they are non basic variable and the value for s3 that is equal to 4 so that is a complete optimal solution which is a non degenerate optimal solution and so we have seen that we have removed the temporary degeneracy and so we summarize that tie in the leaving variable or the minimum ratio rule leads to degenerate basic feasible solution